Hey guys, so today I just wanted to kind of show off a decal based um, outline system. So the reason I wanted to do this is because basically all of the tutorials out there are either going to tell you that you need to use a post process volume for outlines or that you need to make a duplicate mesh, um, which are perfectly viable methods, but uh, but I there's this uh, there's another alternative which doesn't seem to be shown anywhere so um, so this is uh, so these decals are projecting on these meshes and they're creating an outline and they're only going to apply the outline to specific meshes that have a specific stencil value so um, and you can get a bunch of different variations and the reason that you may want to use this method as opposed to a post-process um, is if you want to have in your game a bunch of different uh, variations of outlines. Um, if you try to add a whole bunch of different variations inside of the post-processing, um, it's going to get difficult to change, it's going to get big, it's going to get tangled up, and... Um, and you're going to increase the instruction count of a post process that's going to be ran, ran um, throughout the game. So that just may not be the way to go. Um, it's perfectly viable if you're going to put outlines throughout the entire scene um, with some kind of tune shading. But uh, for selection outlines, if you're doing a bunch of different colors for different items, then it just may not be the way to go. So, um, yeah, also, um, another kind of bonus is you can take a decal and you can take two decals and kind of, uh, mix and match them. Um, there's probably a bit of, uh, extra shader comp complexity that's being added, um, when you do that. So just kind of a nice plus. Also, if you have like, uh, one mesh, if you have different meshes, the thickness of the outline, um, the thickness of the outline you may want to tweak individually per mesh. And if you just put the outlines all done in the post-process material, tweaking values on individual meshes can get difficult. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button here just to kind of show you what I set up. Um, this isn't going to be a blueprint tutorial. Just going to show you the material. Um, so. Um, I'll show you the the blueprint real quick, but I'm not going to really go over it. Um, so I have two cubes here, and they're sitting right next to each other. The volumes are overlapping, the decal volumes are overlapping, but the uh, decals themselves are not affecting the other. One is not affecting the other, um, and the reason for that is because I'm using a stencil mask. Um, so. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do for setting this up is go into your project settings and type in stencil. That'll take you to the rendering section and there'll be an option custom depth stencil pass. By default this is enabled and you're going to want to do enabled with stencil. Um, you may have to restart. I don't remember. I don't think so. Um, but you might have to. Um, once you do that then you're good to go um, and you'll have access to the stencil values um, so just going to jump into the blueprints real quick to show you how that's set up um, if I jump into my third person character um, on right mouse click I am just doing a line trace out from the camera and um, if I get a hit I'm going to send an interface um, interface call out to whatever I hit and if the actor has the interface, so this is the selectable actors that I have in here, move into that blueprint right away. Um, if the actor implements the interface and an event is fired off, and right now I'm just kind of toggling the visibility, I'm just checking what the cur visibility currently is, and I'm setting it to the opposite, and I'm doing the same for uh, rendering custom depth and um, I just have this function sitting out here just so you know that you have the function the ability to change its stencil value um, during your games runtime um, so 
I have my decal. My decal is set. Um, visibility is turned off initially. Um, and by default, the, uh, the cube is not currently rendering to custom depth. So if I go into the rendering section and kind of expand that, keep on scrolling down, you'll see this uh, render custom depth pass. I guess I have it turned on for some reason. Um, you can just leave this off for initially. Um, so this, uh, if you click this box, you'll gain access to the stencil value here. And if you change the stencil value, um, you want this stencil value to match whatever parameter of the stencil value that we'll go over in a minute, um, which exists in the decals material. Um, and then if I go back to rendering, after you set the stencil value, you can go ahead and deactivate that. And you're probably just going to want to, uh, you know, make some children of this actor and, you know, set it to different meshes and set the decals to different, uh, to different instances of the um, outline. And you'll want to set the uh, custom depth to different values. Um, different values if for each different instance. Um, if the if you have you know decals that are using the same instance, then uh, then you can just go ahead and leave it at the same same stencil value. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Again, this isn't really a blueprint tutorial. Just want to really quickly show you how that's set up, and we'll get into this material here. So if I open up the material, so. Let's start with the material settings. I'm in the deferred decal domain. Blend mode is translucent. And decal blend mode is alpha composite. The reason I'm using alpha composite is because if you use emissive, you can't get black values. And I want to be able to have black outlines. And the other um, blend modes seem to be affected by the skylight. So if you have a skylight in your scene and you're using one of the other blend modes, the color of the skylight seems to be imbued on the uh, meshes and it messes up the decals. Um, so by using the alpha composite, whatever the colors you set are the colors which are rendered, which is great. Um, I've just zeroed out the metallic specular roughness and, um, and that way it's not going to affect those values as the decal passes over whatever it passes over. And so this section here is the outline. Um, so offset represents the thickness of the outline. If I, I've got the uh, instance pulled up on my other monitor, and if I change the offset, makes the, I'm gonna reset these values to default. And the offset is just going to change the thickness of the line. And you'll notice it kind of moves in. It doesn't move out. All right. And so the thickness of the line, what you have to do is if, as you get further away, you have to shrink the offset so that because the mesh is getting relatively smaller as you back up, um, the offset has to get smaller as well. So uh, taking into account the distance from the, um, from the decal, the camera to the decal, um, allows you to shrink the offset. And by clamping it, we just make sure that it doesn't go into the negatives. If you throw a power in here, you can kind of adjust the fall off there. And so here we get to the outlines, and we're just sampling scene depth a bunch of times and kind of offsetting it. And um, I'm not going to really explain how this works because it's a bit beyond me. But uh, the main thing you got to worry about is make sure that you set the custom depth parameter Boolean to true, or none of it will work. 
Um, now this section here is going to control the, uh, well I'll just show you, it's going to control some of the inset lines, the line depth is going to control some of the inset lines that appear across your mesh along the uh, along the vertices of your mesh and the power if you adjust that it kind of adjusts the fall off so if I adjust power here it makes it sharper or more blurry so if I go into if I keep on moving along this section here just works out some of the sorting issues that we're going to have. Um, if you don't have that section in there, when you have your mesh being blocked by another mesh, it's uh, the outlines would continue to render, and um, this just kind of takes care of that issue, makes certain that uh, makes certain that it looks right when things intersect. And this right here, you're going to want to take note of. This is how you mask out a stencil value, and you may be using it in other materials. Um, basically, so long as this stencil value matches whatever stencil value is set on the mesh, then it'll be affected by the decal. So if I go into the rendering section of this cylinder here, and I look for render custom depth paths, and I check that, and I set the stencil value to whatever the uh, parameter is, which in which case this instance is using a stencil value of four. The outline will be rendered. If I go to three, it'll disappear. If I go to five, it'll still stay disappeared. So it'll only, only render when it's on four. All right. So let's see I think that's most of what I wanted to cover also um, I have in my post process volume just a regular outline effect so if I search for materials I'm going to just go ahead and turn this on so you can kind of see how it works with a post process um, outline effect the post process outline effect kind of affects like the outside portion of the mesh whereas this kind of affects the a little bit towards the inner s section of the mesh. It doesn't look perfect with the black outlines I've been noticing. But uh, but yeah, if you're using some kind of post process to draw lines, um, it'll play nice with the decal outlines as well for the most part. Okay, so that's I think all that I wanted to cover for now. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.